Jackson Hole is synonymous with all that is wild and untamed in the heart of the North American West, an unforgiving environment that is at once breathtaking and boundless. Our mountains are home to glory and adventure, and the generations of trailblazers who have made their pilgrimage to a place that has no equal. This is the story of Jackson Hole. Jackson has always been a stronghold of gopher broke mavericks. The words, it can't be done, are nothing more than a call to action. And like the intrepid pioneers who came before them, Paul McAllister and Alex Morley, neither of whom knew anything about starting a ski resort, had a vision to transcend the European ski model by building a two and a half mile aerial tramway connecting the Plush Valley floor to the Teton skyline. We were avid skiers and building this spectacular new ski resort was just uh, the greatest thing that could possibly happen. Development would prove to be anything but easy as they were tasked with taming a mountain like no other. Paul was, a, from my point of view, a very loyal, good man. People couldn't push him over very easily. He pursued this project with a tenacity and determination. I, have, I actually admire him. The early eras of the mountain resort were bathed in cult status. Rendezvous Mountain was about going beyond the predetermined experiences found at other resorts in North America. Jackson Hole was meant to be a place for adventurers to cut their teeth and test their wits. And it was. But business wasn't booming. He had very tough times in the early days. I think he survived by selling furniture out of condos and he was selling lifetime passes, anything to try to survive another year. By the mid 80s, McAllister's business model had been realized, but it still lacked the lifeblood it needed to survive, the numbers. Those lucky enough to stomp its grounds lauded the visionary efforts of the original owners, but it was a hard sell to market the steep, rocky, and wild Wyoming experience to all but the hardcore skiers and adventurers. The resort was at a crossroads. Jackson Hole needed to grow if it was going to survive. But who had the like-minded moxie to advance Jackson's ambitious ideal and elevate it to the world stage? The Kemmerers were a mining family who had been successful in the coal industry for generations. With history in Wyoming, and even a town that bears their name, they were all too familiar with the harsh environments that backdrop this beautiful state. Together with his two sisters, Betty and Connie, Jay Kemmerer purchased the resort from McAllister in 1992. When the Kemmerer Coal Company sold, we made a decision that we wanted to put a large part of that back into the state. I think one of my favorite quotes from my brother is that Jackson Hole is a diamond in the raw and that certainly has turned out to be true. I was really excited to, to hear that the Kimmerer family was going to uh, buy the resort because it was a local Wyoming family and a sole ownership which is I think un very unusual in the ski business. With a lack of infrastructure and antiquated lifts their task was an uphill battle. Well, I think it started with an oh my god um, and now we own it, what are we going to do with it? It didn't come fully loaded with everything. It had many phases of figuring out what was most necessary to put together. The Kemmerers rolled up their sleeves and made key additions like detachable quad lifts and an eight-passenger gondola that changed the austere feel of the resort into something more progressive, all while never losing sight of its original identity. Rescuing a troubled resort from the jaws of bankruptcy is no small feat. Neither is rebuilding a multi-million dollar tram during the height of a recession. I think everyone here in the Valley can attest to it. You know, hats off to the Kimmers. They've done such a good job and have empowered this ski area to, to become what it is today. Really wanting to reinvest in the state was very important to myself and, and our family. Our mission statement, teamwork, low key, just to be humble and working together makes us what we are today. The word stewardship comes to mind because it, it's really a, a gem that you have to take care of and make the right moves, make the right decisions, and, and they've done that. And now with the Kemmerer family, it's really become what my father and Paul envisioned back in the 1960s, it's just 50 years later. Say goodbye, goodbye, it's all over now.